Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on criminal profiling in forensic psychology as part of Year 11 psychology. So let's get started. So the very first concept we went through was what a criminal psychologist does, so we'll cover that in this video as well, plus obviously what we covered uh, in criminal profiling and what happens at a crime scene. So criminal psychology is the study of the thoughts, emotions and behaviours or intentions that contribute to criminal behaviour. So as we know from the general definition of psychology, which we looked at earlier in the year, that looks at the thoughts, feelings and behaviours um, and the factors that contribute to them. It's similar in uh, criminal psychology, as you can see, we examine the thoughts, emotions and behaviours specifically to criminal behaviour and the factors that contribute to it. So criminologists and criminal psychologists both study criminals, obviously, but their focus is quite different. So criminologists uh, study the causes of crime and ways to prevent it and control it in the first place, so before the fact, whereas criminal psychologists study the thoughts, feelings and behaviour of criminals who have been caught already, so that's after the fact. So the role of a criminal psychologist is to use their psychological knowledge and expertise to evaluate criminals. This includes the list here, so it includes creating criminal profiles, interviewing criminals to gain insights and understanding behind their motivations, their thought process during the crime itself, look for cues of deception, so look for micro expressions or signs of lying, evaluate the mental capacity of criminals to make sure they are fit for trial, determine if criminals are legally competent to stand trial, and psychologically evaluate defendants using various tests and measures. So criminal profiling is intended to help investigators accurately predict or as accurately predict as possible and profile the characteristics of unknown criminal subjects or offenders. So this is typically what's done at actual crime scenes. They're often extensively photographed and examined and criminal profilers, along with criminal psychologists and the police force, will try and create a profile of the likely criminal that's responsible. So there is steps involved in criminal profiling like we did in class when we looked at uh, various false crime scenes. So the crime is first compared to other similar crimes from the past to see if there is a serial killer or a serial offender in play. The crime scene itself is analysed extensively, so lots of photographs, lots of analysis. The life of the victim is analysed, this is called victimology, so to look at the background behind the victim themselves to see if that gives investigators any clues as to, again, the motivation or the reasons why that person was targeted. The motivation of the crime is analysed, so was it a crime of passion or was it in cold blood? And a description of the possible offender is developed, which is the last step and most important step. Now, in certain instances, criminologists won't be able to, or criminal psychologists, I should say, shouldn't or won't be able to come up with a complete profile, but they'll get as much information as they possibly can from the crime scene itself in order to try and come up with a profile so it narrows down the search. Now, it's also necessary to try and establish the criminal's MO, or modus operandi, which means modes of operating or working or the usual way of doing something. So a lot of criminals, especially serial killers, will have a particular MO, a particular process. It's very systematic and it's very characteristic and unique to them. That's also extremely helpful in the criminal uh, profiling process. Okay, guys, so that is criminal profiling in terms of what you need to know for the test and the exam and, of course, the difference between criminology and criminal psychology. I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising!